This is ridiculous. My wife's gone crazy. I didn't understand this. And then the worst thing of all happened. Once a month in our denomination, all of the churches came together. So there were like five, six hundred people. And that was the Sunday when I was off duty. I could just sit in the audience. And the senior elders were looking after the meeting. I liked those like this. So the first time one of those meetings happened, after all this had started, the first time we had one of these meetings, yes. the first time since Sylvia started misbehaving, <laughs> we're sitting there in the middle, and it's a very serious church meeting, and Sylvia's there right alongside me, and she starts twitching. <laughs> And she's having this conversation with the Lord again. Yeah, I'm on task. I can't just remember it. Say, Lord, not now. <laughs> and I'm sitting there thinking, Oh God, not now. <laughs> Please, not now. Yeah, <laughs> And she erupts. In the middle of this really serious meeting. I'm just sitting there staring at him. I'm wishing a hole would open up and swallow me into the hole. And the whole meeting comes to a stop. And everybody's trying to look at my wife. As she slowly slides off the chair again. And the senior elders are all looking at me. Because I'm supposed to be the head of my wife. And I know what they're thinking. They're looking at me and saying, do something about your wife. And I'm just thinking, well, you try. I don't know what to do. It was horrible. I can laugh about it now. I was not laughing then. But you know, I said before, God knows how he's going to get our hearts. You know, we have been married for 34 years. I know my wife. And I know the many qualities that she has. And the one thing that I, one of the many things I treasure in her, is that she hates unreality. She hates the mask wearing that we do in church. She wants reality. If she asks you a question, how are you doing? And you say, I'm fine. She'll say, no, how are you doing? Because she wants reality. And I think that's a quality I really value in her. There's too much mask wearing in the church. We were supposed to be good Christians, so we wear the Christian mask. So, while all these embarrassing things were happening, what was increasing my struggle was I knew she was not playing a game. This was real. She could not control this. And that didn't really help me. Except that I knew it was real. And I, and I didn't like it. I'm thinking, if this is God and I don't like it, I have a problem. Because there was nothing sinister or dark about what was happening. I, just, I could see her changing. There was real healing coming. But I still didn't understand the ridiculous behaviour. But because 
I believed it was real. Mutta koska mä uskoin, että se oli todellista. We made a decision. To go to Toronto. Now listen, this cold fish would never have gone anywhere near Toronto. But I wanted some answers. I wanted to understand this. Now God has got a real sense of humor. Now here's this cold fish little Englishman. I want to understand God. This doesn't make sense. I want to understand this. And I actually sat on the plane to Toronto. This is true, with a notebook. I was writing down the questions that I wanted answers for. Why does my long wife laugh and fall on the floor? What is the purpose of that? I need to understand this. Sylvia is looking at me on the plane. And she's going. And she said this. She said, "Now, don't be offended when I say this." Now you know something bad is coming on this. She said, "Don't be offended when I say this." But when we get to the meetings in Toronto, can we agree one thing? You go your way and I'll go mine. And we'll just meet together at meal time. And to go back to the hotel in the evening. Now you're not offended by that, are you? No. Yeah. Fine. Okay. So we got to Toronto. I can never forget walking into the meeting. It was a pastors' conference. I selected the pastors' conference. Because I thought that would be the best behaved conference. I thought it would be safer than a normal catch the fire conference. I walked into that building. And I looked around. And I thought, these are pastors. Surely not. <laughs> Sylvia, Sylvia just disappeared into the crowd. <laughs> she was like a sponge. She wanted everything. <laughs> I stood at the back. <laughs> For what have I come to? <laughs> this is a lunatic asylum. <laughs> this is not God. <laughs> I was very good at deciding what was God and what was <laughs> I hated it. <laughs> I stood right at the back of the hall <laughs> so that I had a wall behind me. <laughs> so I could better defend myself then. <laughs> so I could just fight them off as they came in. <laughs> All these crazy people were saying, "Can I pray?" And I'm saying, "No, get away, get away!" I don't want what you've got. And I stayed there for the first two or three days. Sylvia was loving every minute of it. I was thinking, what a waste of money this is. I paid airfares, I paid hotels. To travel half around the world to a lunatic But on the Thursday of that week, I made a decision that ended up changing my life. I made a, I made a decision that ended up changing my life. I decided not to stay at the back. I decided to come right near the front. So that all I had in front of me was the worship team. Because the one thing I really did love about Toronto was the worship. The worship was like worship I'd never experienced before. 
So I decided on the Thursday to go near the front. And I could just worship and ignore the lunatics behind me. <laughs> so in the middle of the worship, I'm doing the, just, just hands up worshiping. Got so a hand on my shoulder. Turned around. He was this great big Canadian man. He was enormous. So like a tree. And it's very hot in there. Very sweaty. And I looked him into this guy's face. He smiled. And he swallowed me in his arm. Now we don't do that anymore. We, we shake hands and introduce ourselves. You don't just hug a complete stranger. But he's crushing me. And my face is level with his chest. And he is soaking wet with sweat. And he's going like this. <laughs> my face is going. <laughs> and it's horrible. And I'm, I, I politely put my arms around him. <laughs> so I've got my arms around this sweaty back. <laughs> and then I let go. <coughs> Enough now, please. Enough. Just let go. Finally, he lets go. The bathroom. <laughs> and I'm, I'm soaking wet. And he just looks me straight in the eye. Puts his hands on my shoulders. And he just said this. He said, Daddy told me to come and give you a hug. And he walks away. That was it. That's what I see. I'm standing there. Daddy. Easy. Easy. Daddy told me to come and give you a hug. Easy. That's pathetic. But you know, it's like I knew who he was talking about. But the thought of addressing God as Daddy was so offensive to me. So I was deeply offended. For he's God. He's awesome God who we worship. You cannot call him Daddy. And I was really offended. I never saw this man again, ever. I mean, he was big, he couldn't see. <coughs> I never saw him for the rest of the week. Sylvia has her theory about it. She says perhaps he was an angel. He said to get you. I do angels do angel sweat like that? <laughs> Doesn't seem to fit to me. <laughs> but I never saw him again. And I came back from Toronto. And I prayed a prayer that had really changed my life. I said, God, that Canadian man knows a God that I don't know. Is he right or am I right? Will you show me? Don't ever believe that God doesn't hear your prayers. <laughs> he hears every single word you pray. Be very careful what you pray for. Because he's listening. And he was listening to me. And he completely turned my life upside down. We ended up being thrown out of the church. Because of the controversy of Toronto. We were pastors, but our elders threw us out because we went to Toronto. But 
what happened was that God increased the desire in me. Mutta se mitä tapahtui, Jumala lisäsi tätä halajamista minussa. I wanted to know what this was about. Mä halusin todella tietää, mistä tässä oli kysymys. And I gave by, by praying the prayer that I prayed. Ja sen rukouksen kautta, että mä rukoilin. I gave God permission to show me. Mä annoin Jumalalle luvan näyttää mulle. So I wanted to know, is he right or am I right? Mä halusin tietää, oliko tämä kananalaismies oikeassa vai oliko minä oikeassa. Because I could not get my head round the thought of addressing God as daddy. Koska mä en pystynyt päässäni ymmärtämään, että mä voin kutsua isää Jumalaa isiksi. It was just wrong to me. Minun mielestä oli väärin. And God wants to reveal himself to us. Ja Jumala haluaa ilmentää itsensä meille. And this is about revelation to our hearts. Tää kysymys on ilmestyksestä meidän sydämen tasolla. God literally turned my life upside down. See, when you go seeking after him, the Bible is very clear. Seek the Lord and you will find him. If your heart is after God, you will find him. But listen, You will never understand him. Mutta sä et koskaan tule ymmärtämään häntä. Because the knowledge of God doesn't belong in our heads. Koska se ei ole päätason asia. The knowledge of God is in our hearts. Vaan Jumalan tunteminen on sydämen tasolla. See, 